Hey guys, in this short video I will show you the newly added functionalities to the uh, Frugin node. So for those of you who don't know, Frugin is a Java implementation of a Polkadot host, uh, obviously for the Polkadot ecosystem. Um, and we are trying to get it to a level where we could call it a relaying node. How far have we gone down that road? Well, we just upgraded it to a full node. So in this video, I'll show you all the, all the main portion of the functionalities that were added by this update. So um, for the start, we just need to go to the, uh, through the steps for uh, getting started. Cloning the repository is the first step, the just basic cloning of the repository, followed by changing the directory to the uh, application directory. As for the Java version for using this project, you would uh, need to use Java 17 as we do have things like sealed classes and um, records and so on, which are not supported in previous versions. And we also have preview features from future versions, which we also need to use uh, with Java 17. So uh, yeah, you just need to use Java 17 to run this project. There is no uh, flexibility there. Now, after you're done setting up with your uh, Java, since in Polkadot the state transitions in the blockchain happen through runtime, uh, this runtime is WebAssembly. Java has no way of interacting with WebAssembly files. We needed to find an external library that could do that uh, for us. For now, we are using uh, Wasmer Java, which is basically using the Java native interface to connect Java with Rust helping us by making us call Java functions, which, uh, which on their own call Rust functions, which can interact with WebAssembly objects. And uh, this is our connection to the runtime. So we have already plans for the next phase of automating this whole process because it's not very user friendly. But for now, uh, you're going to have to uh, see the Wasmer setup folder. It's right there in the uh, root folder, uh, root level of the project. And uh, in it, it contains just a bunch of binaries for different combinations of operating systems plus chips. For, uh, for example, we can look at the Mac folder. There we have the AMD, which is Intel, and the ARM, which is uh, yeah, M1, M2, and M3 chips, and so on. And um, since we are using uh, the Java native interface to connect to Rust, that means that essentially our Java is platform dependent and we need to use the correct combination of OS plus chip binary so that our application will run correctly. So uh, you would need to know your combination of uh, operating system plus chip. You need to just copy this uh, file in the library slash Java slash extensions folder. Once there, no, nothing uh, more needs to be done. Then we just go and build the project. So, oh, this is a bit big. Let me just clear this. Um, so first we need to just call Gradle build. This will run the test, build the projects, create the jar file. And after that, we need to execute the jar file to start the node. Now, except using Java jar on the jar file. We also need to be uh, able to call enable preview because without this flag, uh, not all the features in our project would work. Uh, so it is a mandatory flag to add. After that, we have three more flags. We have the three more options, I, su I should say. We have the network, which is also a mandatory option. You need to select which network you want to be thinking on. So. In this example, I've given Polkadot, but obviously you can change it to West End on Kusama uh, to your liking. The node mode is basically uh, going to tell the application if it's going to be running as a light client or as a full node, since we have both of those in the same project. So for this example, I'm obviously going to be running it as a full node. And as for the sync mode, we have the options of uh, either warp syncing or full syncing. The benefits of warp syncing is that it's very fast compared to other kinds of things. The benefits of full sync is that it not only checks the headers, it also checks the block body. 
and it turns core execute block on the block body itself, making sure that uh, if the execution is correct, then that means that the block is indeed valid. So full sync is the more total approach, but also obviously going to be the slower one. I'm just going to copy this, uh, this whole command here and enter it. Sometimes in the beginning, we might see a timeout error. I'm actually hoping we see it now. Yep. So when we see timeout exception, uh, this is nothing to worry about. It just means that uh, our first attempts uh, failed. It doesn't mean that the node will stop trying. And as you see, from one point on, it just starts syncing. Now, here, it's uh, the logging is a bit verbose. Uh, we we will probably dumb it down a little bit just because if I scroll down to the bottom, you can see the speed at which uh, it's just clogging the log with information. But it's also uh, good that it's executing all of these blocks successfully. So as you can see, we are calling not only are we calling the core execute block on every block, but before that, we are also calling the check inherent, which is not mandatory, but we like to do it just because the spec suggested that it would be a good idea to put it here. Um, so those things in the code. Uh, well, my ID is a bit slow, but yeah. So once we start the machine, we basically get all the blocks that we need. After we get all the blocks, we start running uh, the execute function on them. So the execute block function First of all, it needs to create a runtime because it's going to be making a bunch of runtime calls. After that, um, we enter a for loop. And in this for loop, for uh, every single one of the blocks that we gathered, and we don't have to worry about um, get blocks not returning anything because it's coming from a protobuf file. So it's always going to return something. It just might be an empty list. Um, yeah, and we here here we can see that we are calling the runtime function check inherent. After that is um, after that comes as a result, and it's good to execute. We continue with the biggest function there is with the core execute block. This in turn calls all of our host API functions. So I'm not just I'm not gonna show all of them because they're um, way too many. But in the host API, we have functions here that are defined as imports. And all of these imports are getting imported into the, into the runtime. And then when we call a runtime function, uh, the exported uh, functions very uh, often call uh, imported functions within them. So we can even increase the tracking by adding a login here, which uh, for the moment we have not done, but it's also something uh, worth considering. As for uh, other parts of this um, block execution process, we also, um, or should I say, other parts of the full node functionalities, we also uh, had to extend the RPC functions. So supporting way more uh, functions is what I mean to say here. We have an example command here, which is going to be calling the function um, sync state gets uh, sync spec. This is going to be returning a lot of information about all the uh, boot nodes, the connected nodes, and so on and so forth. And um, yeah, since we are currently the default port for our application is 9922, I don't need to change that here, but keep in mind this needs to be changed if you're running it anywhere else. So let's just enter another, um, another tab. So as we can see, we are definitely getting an answer here, maybe a bit longer than we would like. But if we put this into a JSON formatter, it will look uh, way more pretty. The important here, uh, thing here is that uh, the result part, you can see we have name Polkadot. This is regarding the chain we're running on. Um, the chain type, of course, is life. And the boot nodes for the Polkadot are being listed here one by one. So. Um, as you can see, this is an example of one boot node. The next string is also another boot node and so on. I'm not going to highlight every single one of them. That would take a lot of time. Uh, but yes, this, the main point of this is to demonstrate that the RPC functions are working. 
Um, uh, also, you can, of course, do uh, local development in which, in which you can just test out things before you go and try and sync with one of the uh, bigger networks. I'm not going to be showcasing all of these steps here because I think the most important thing is that we are able to sync on the live networks. <coughs> and so um, those are the newly added changes to the, um, the big portion of the newly added changes to the um, Frugin node. We are syncing successfully with the full sync. We are executing block successfully. And uh, yes, this is all for the upgrade. For the next um, phase, we'll be focusing on the BAPE and Grandpa protocols and achieving a altering node at some point.